Hello, Capricorn. Hello, Capricorn, and welcome to Live in the Solution. I'm your astrologer and tarot card reader, Mary Trimble, here with your readings for February the 10th through the 16th. Guys, I'm sorry this is late, but I have had so many technical issues, I cannot tell you. Plus, I decided to do a new format, which was not advisable on the full moon. <laughs> Um, and it has been <laughs> a lengthy process, let me put it that way. Um, so I have been as fast as possible. Um, but here we are. Let's go straight to your readings. I have meditated before. This is for Capricorn. Wonderful gifts, guidance, blessings, and helpful information. Can you give Capricorn for February the 10th through the 16th? Lovely. Three cards. Oh, wow. I think that's, that's four cards. I'm going to take them. I'm going to take your four cards. Oh, <laughs> lovely. Wow. Good job I took them. Uh, now, these are your clarifying cards. Guys, just a little side note that these are your four, these are general readings, right, for the collective. So take what resonates and leave the rest. If you would like a personal, more tailored reading, Click on this link here and it'll take you to my website. You can see all the um, read the kind of readings that I offer and all the other services too. You can check it out. All right, this is for Capricorn. What wonderful gifts, guidance, blessings, and the helpful information can you give Capricorn through these clarifying cards for February the 10th through the 16th? And darling, stay tuned for the astrological report. Mars is moving into your sign, darling, and it loves your sign so check that out which is directly after this reading okay please clarify this there it is please clarify the piece oh wow okay uh this is interesting because that's coming up again. So I'm going to take the two cards that are turned up. The others I'll put back in. They were already turned up. Let's pull them down so you can see them. Here we are. Can you see them better? Um, oh, yeah, that's that. Okay. Now, please, you've got a lot of messages here, Capricorn. Please clarify the lovers and the sun. There it is. Oh, interesting very very interesting you know some of you aren't old enough but there used to be uh rowan and something's laughing something and rowan's laughing i can't remember uh whoopi not whoopi goldberg oh my god what's her name goldie horn started i think or became well known on that show and there used to be a guy that used to, you know, look through a hedge and he would say, very, very interesting. Anyway, I digress, darling. <laughs> okay, so the first card out for you, uh, Capricorn, is the Six of Cups. I always think of Neptune with the Six of Cups because this is kind of daydreaming. It's thinking about the past. It's looking at the past through rose-tinted glasses. It's kind of staying, you know, thinking about your childhood. Sometimes you can be thinking, oh, you know, that was such an innocent time. You know, I'd like to go back there. And But really, if we're transported back there, um, it probably wasn't how we thought it was. You know, these children are playing in a well with all flowers in their cups, you know. Kind of wasn't like that. Um, so... It's, it's okay to visit the past and it's nice to kind of think back sometimes, but it's not okay to stay there because we can 
lose time and not take care of our responsibilities. And what's interesting, um, clarifying, the Six of Cups is the Hermit. And the Hermit is all about um, clearing the mind, right? Clearing the monkey brain, quietening the monkey brain. So the Hermit wants to uh, separate himself from his mind. The lantern in the Hermit represents his mind. And he's an old wise man. He's gone into a, a cave and he has meditated. He's connected with the, the ethereal realm. And he comes out and he's no longer um, ruled by his mind, the monkey brain. He is. He can laugh at it. He can separate himself. He can observe it and see how crazy it is. You know, that's in meditation we call, you know, the mind that goes all over the place, you know, that's thinking about things that's happened and perhaps thinking, you know, I should have said this, I should have said that, and that, you know, going through all those emotions. He has mastered that. And he has come out and he is really the light at the end of the tunnel and he shows others the way. So I always think of him as the student and the teacher, as we all are. We are all students and we are all teachers. And it's our responsibility to pay it forward, to learn everything we can and then in turn teach it to others. Um, so meditation, darling, I'm going to say that, meditation. Now, the next card out is the Ace of Pentacles. I love the Ace of Pentacles. The Ace of Pentacles shows how, um, how you have started to see the seeds that you have sown sprout. So you started to see all the investments that you've made, either energetically or financially, starting to pay off. So you're seeing that return on it and it's exciting. It's exciting. So it's coming. If you haven't already seen it, it is coming for you, Capricorn. Look, clarifying this again is the Six of Cups and also the uh, high priestess. So this, they clarifying the six of cups and the high priestess. Now let's tackle the six of cups because you've got this repeated in your in your uh, reading. So this I always think of Neptune, the six of cups. So this can be creativity. It can also um, be. You know, I, I was getting that sometimes there's some kind of project that you can do that perhaps involves children or stories about children or um, your childhood, your childhood. Maybe you can do something creative and bring that to the forefront. Now, what's interesting, you know, this also can be tra trauma from the childhood that you need to um, address. And the high priestess comes in. She's fertile with, um, with uh, intuition, psychic abilities. And when she comes into a reading, she's sitting at Solomon's temple. She's got the the black column and the white column. Um, you know, it represents purity and evil and uh, light and dark and um, light and shadow. We all have this. She's in between though. She's melded. It's yin yang too, right? It's male and female. She's in between this. She is giving you the keys to the Akashic Records, the wisdom from the beginning of time, Capricorn. And so this probably is representing the past. The six of cups can also represent the past, right? I think that what I'm getting here is that you can gain so much experience from looking back, but in a structured way, in a way that's balanced, right? She's right in between. She's balancing light and dark. She's got one foot in Solomon's temple and she's her back's to Solomon's temple and she's facing out to you. This is an opportunity for you to kind of, look, you can heal the past, 
and you can really look back and get some wisdom from it. And it's going to kind of, well, it's going to be, it's almost like it's money in the bank addressing this. I feel that you are really in a very um, intuitive and psychic time. And that's actually what's happening on Valentine's Day because Valentine's Day, um, the moon is in Scorpio and it is, uh, is it, you know, I, I did this the other day. Uranus, I think, is opposite. I'd have to double check that. But listen to the astrology report after this, directly after this, and that'll tell you the exact aspects. I've totally forgotten right now. But I know that Uranus is opposite. I think it's opposite uh, the moon. Absolutely. And that is um, intuition and psychic ability. So you have this uh, key or this doorway into to trust your gut feeling. You, you, look, they say, you know, your instinct, the money is on your instinct. Do not forget that. Um, don't listen. Don't second guess it. Just go with your gut feeling. Um, now, you have two cards next. You have the lover's card. And you have the sun card right next to each other, right? The lover's card is, you know, is lovely, but it can mean a decision. And the sun is very auspicious. So it could be a beautiful romance that's coming in. It's a lovely romance. You're feeling that love. You're feeling a connection with someone. But what's interesting is you are clarifying it is the two of swords and the two of swords is you not making a decision and and it's blocking you in some way and it's interesting because you've got the moon at the top of this card as well and there's choppy waters in the background and your refusal to see the situation for what it is and not make the decision um, is... Uh, is going to block you in some way. I'm kind of got to go back to this, the Six of Cups here. So I think the Six of Cups is an illusion of what's going on. And uh, you need to kind of take the blindfold off and see what's happening. Your intuition is going to guide you. Look, if you're feeling untrusting, look, it's going to be intense anyway for this week because we do have the moon moving into uh, Scorpio and that's very intense. It's very deep. It's what, you know, wanting that, you know, it's wanting this wonderful connection between, you know, the lovers and the sun. You want the sun shining on, on your love. Um, but there is something about this relationship that you are not, or not seeing and not looking at, but I have a feeling that you're, you look, when you tap into your gut feeling, you must trust it. You must trust your gut feeling. And listen, you know, it's uh, with Mercury going retrograde. Well, we have this beautiful energy on uh, Friday. So I would say that, um, I would say that conversations on Valentine's Day and a, a, a couple of days before and after um, will go well as long as you think before you speak. So you must say something with thought and meaning and with kindness and come from a place of compassion. Um, but I think that there's a decision on the table. Now, either you are refusing to commit to this person in a, in a full-on way or you're refusing to see that this is not what you had originally thought it was. Um, but Capricorn, that's up to you. You have to look at this situation for what it is. Now, this can be a financial situation. I have to also re uh, reiterate that because this, the lovers is Venus, right? And that means uh, it's also finance. So uh, you perhaps are not looking at your finances in the right way. 
So it can be interpreted in, in uh, that way too. Uh, so whatever makes more sense to you, Capricorn, go with that. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe if you haven't already. And give me feedback on the new format. Let me know if you like it, if it's worth my time and energy to uh, do this or if you can't be bothered. I would really appreciate your feedback. And um, stay tuned for the Astro astrological report coming up next. Mwah! I love you all and I'll see you on the other side. Hello, thank you for staying on to listen to the astrology report and find out what's going on in the celestial sky for this week. Um, so this is for the week of February the 10th through the 16th and not there's not a lot going on um, during the week. There's nothing, well look, Friday it's a Valentine's Day, so happy Valentine's Day to you guys. Um, I would say if you don't have a Valentine, be your own Valentine. Give yourself a romantic evening, you know, a bubble bath or glass of wine or, you know, go out with friends or, you know, pamper yourself in some way. Um, you don't have to feel out of sorts on Valentine's Day and it's only a commercial holiday anyway, so it's not that important. But um, there are no exact aspects and normally I don't talk about the moon, but as it's Valentine's Day, I decided to mention that the moon is in Scorpio. Now, when the moon is in Scorpio, the energy of Scorpio is intense. It's deep, it's meaningful. You know, Scorpio doesn't have time for... Um, shallow friends it's all about something's got to mean something it's got to it's got to be deep and purposeful um so this is kind of a very it can be a very intense romantic evening on valentine's day now not only is the moon in scorpio on valentine's day it also interacts with three planets the first of which is uh uranus the second is Mercury, and the third, closely following that, is Jupiter. Now, Uranus will kind of bring in that uh, unexpected energy. It's the planet of sudden happenings. So, plans can change in the flash of an eye. So, expect the unexpected. Somebody could call up and cancel plans, or even show up without warning and make plans with you. Um, so, Remember spontaneity, remember that word, be spontaneous. And listen, Mercury is the planet of communication. So, you know, conversations will flow, it'll be flirty and Jupiter's coming in. There's going to be an abundance of love, laughter and joy. Now, I will say we are getting ready to for Mercury to go retrograde. So we need to be very mindful and cognizant of the things that we say. Our conversations can be taken out of context and that is not our intention. That may not be our intention, I should say. Um, so we need to be really careful about, about that. Now, so um, listen, the only day that's some, that something major is happening um, is Sunday. And there are two major events on Sunday. The first is Mars moves into Capricorn. Now, whenever a planet moves into another sign, it's huge energy shift. And Mars is this planet of action, right? It wants to be, it's antsy, it's got to be moving all the time. It's got, you know, it's got so much energy and it wants to get things done. It's the planet of war, you know, it'll start a war. <laughs> Anything to get moving. Um, so, Capricorn is the planet of uh, ambition, but also planning. And actually, um, Capricorn will plan something and follow it through to completion. So Mars loves being in <laughs> Capricorn. It's actually exalted in Capricorn, which means it can fully express, he can fully express himself. Mars is very happy in Capricorn and will be able to complete 
um, projects and things that are started. So this is an incredible energy to work with. I mean, start anything that you've kind of left on the back shelf, you know, get it out and start doing it because you will have the stamina that will carry you through to completion. So anything you start is a really, um, it's a really good opportunity. You know, ride the crest of the wave, darling, co-create with the universe. And then, darling, the dreaded Mercury going retrograde. <laughs> Mercury retro. If you don't know anything about astrology, I'm sure you've heard of Mercury retrograde. <laughs> Blame it on Mercury retrograde. <laughs> so Mercury is the planet of communication. It's also the planet of logic, thought, your thought process. It rules electronics, mechanics, local um, travel. So, you know, um, city, you know, the, the public transport. So things can be delayed under Mercury retrograde, right? So what we have to do, the first thing we have to do is to allow for extra time to get to work or for any appointments, any important appointments. We must always tack on extra time in anticipation of those delays. Now, we must always check our texts and emails. This energy, Mercury retrograde, we don't see the details. We compl we're completely blinded to certain things that happen to me. We're in the shadow. We're already feeling it right now. So we're in the sh shadow period because as Mercury slows down, the qualities of the planets, any planet that slows down ready to go retrograde, um, all the symbolism from that planet is amplified. So we are really, you know, it's really slowing down a Sunday. It stations to go to, to go retrograde. It'll be retrograde till March 8th, 9th, I think it is. I have to double, I'm pretty sure it's 8th, March 8th or 9th. And then we have a shadow period after that until it kind of picks up speed when it changes direction. There's a way to handle, you can get a lot of things done in Mercury retrograde. Mercury retrograde can really help you in certain areas. This is an amazing time or, or an incredible opportunity to organize and clean and clear out you know, donate those clothes that have been there for ages that don't fit you or you haven't worn for a long time, donate them or sell them. Um, you know, clear the decks. M minimalism is the word, right? So get rid, you know, and this is a time of reflection. So it's a perfect time to meditate. It's wonderful to um, sort things out in your house, to clear things out, to get rid of garbage or things that you don't, I mean, really just organize and chuck it out. This is a time to plan, but don't execute. So anything that you can do behind the scenes, anything you can prepare, perhaps you're, look, if you're in a business, you might be developing a new program. That's perfect to do all that work and then launch it when um, you know, the new moon or when Mercury goes direct. So we can work with these energies. Um, you know, we'll miss words out, we'll say the wrong words. I mean, I'm going to apologize in advance for everything that I say wrong now, <laughs> because that happens. Um, so listen, I just want to say I do have a Facebook group that's um, an astrology group and it's a private group and every two weeks I do a live feed in that group and we look at the new moon and the full moon and how we receive it respectively every two weeks. So wh whomever shows up will look at their um, sign and we'll see which area of their lives they're receiving this energy. And whatever else is going on. And then I also have my tarot cards on hand to answer questions. So it's a lovely group. It's filled with love. Um, my only requirement is that you do have a profile photo and you've had a, 
you know, an account for a while. I don't, I don't want fake accounts, you know, so I've had to, I've had to erase a couple of accounts that were fake. And, um, but it's lovely. It's such a lovely thing. So I hope you will join me there. Listen, sign up for my newsletter because some really cool things are coming up and I'm going to be letting people know. Everything, um, is below all the links below. You can check it out. Another way to help me is through Patreon. And, um, I post things on there. I don't post anywhere else. And I put the report, the astrological report, the written report, I put that up before these, uh, videos are released there. Um, and there's different tiers. You can, you can, uh, support me for as little as a dollar a month there. It's not a lot of money but it is to me. I can do a lot with that. Um, so what else? Uh, that's it. Um, please don't forget to like, share, comment. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Mwah! I love you all. And I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.